Hey everybody, I'm Frankie Massicott, parenting uh, worker for KSES, and I'm here today for our third week of What's for Lunch. Hi, I'm Trudy. I'm joining Frankie and Chantel. I'm also a parenting worker, and today we will be doing fry bread. So for those of you who guessed, good on you. Gwe Gwe, I'm Chantal Haddad, nutritionist at Cattery Hospital. Welcome back to What's for Lunch. And I'm very excited to see uh, Trudy make fry bread. I, this, I have to say, I've never made before. <laughs> <laughs> so Frankie, show us what's in the kits. We have a very big kit this oh, week. Oh yes, we yeah. do. So uh, come pick up with strong arms. <laughs> you need <laughs> muscles to pick up this yeah. bag this so week. So we'll start by everybody who's registered for the program will receive these free uh, ingredients. And uh, to start, they're going to be getting the oil because you need oil for fry bread. They're also going to be getting the uh, flour to prepare the recipe. And they're going to be getting some uh, baking powder. <coughs> and then what we've included in the kit, which is to encourage if you guys want to use fry bread to make Indian tacos, which is separate from the fry bread recipe, but we are giving the ingredients to everybody registered so that if you have chili in the freezer, you want to make a batch of chili, you're going to be able to make this recipe. So we are going to be showing that later on uh, in today's show, uh, but this is what everybody who uh, gets the kit will be receiving. So the lettuce. They're going to be getting milk, which actually, sorry, this it's is also part of the, part of the fried the bread, bread recipe. Yeah. So that should go there. And uh, we've included some sour cream. And this is really just to garnish your Indian tacos. So there's an onion, there's some tomatoes. And lastly, obviously the cheese, right? We need cheese for Indian tacos. So um, I guess we can start with Trudy uh, showing us what we need. Yeah, I'm just going to yeah, rearrange we things. All, all of the way. Because we want to see what you're so doing. So what I've measured out, first of all, is the four cups of flour just in the bowl. Okay, then we're going to add our quarter teaspoon of salt. And this is very important. Your baking powder must be level. So it's two tablespoons. Tablespoons is the big, big one. And the reason for that is that's the leavening agent. That's what makes it puff up. So if you put too much of this, your uh, fry breads are going to explode. <laughs> we don't want that happening. <laughs> so there's one. And use a straight edge to make sure you're getting that level tablespoon. So that's a good trick because I'll be honest, usually because I do a lot more baking and I never ever level. Yeah, and I'm, not level. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> showing that, okay, let, let's show. That's not level. That's not level. Okay, so I'm just so going to really cut right across. And there you go, your level tablespoon. And kids love leveling. And whenever <laughs> I go in the schools and we're making a recipe, they love that part. Mm -hmm. And how important do you think it is to use these type of measuring tools? Because that's another thing. I will, if it says tablespoon, I grab a spoon from the drawer and I <laughs> use that. Or a teaspoon, the same thing. So I think I guess... When we want to be accurate in specific recipes, it's better to use the appropriate tools. Yep. Make sure you measure properly. This this is <laughs> yeah. one I recommend measuring, yeah. as you've seen me done before. Before I don't measure, I know what I'm doing. But this needs measuring, okay? It really so, depends what you're so making. So here is my quarter cup of sugar. It's so funny. i got to go back to what you just said, Trudy, because when we were looking at having her be a guest with us for the show, you know, we were get, trying to get the actual ingredient <laughs> the recipe. And if you know Trudy, Trudy eyeballs everything. So it was like really, really not necessary for her to share that information. But this, for her to actually say, no, you need to be accurate. Yeah, you better because believe you better it. Be accurate. <laughs> so what I've done is taken all the dry ingredients and mixed it up so that all the sugar, all the salt, and the baking powder is evenly distributed within the dry mix before... I add the wet. Otherwise, you're gonna you'll get lumps of see disaster. Well, no, you'll have pieces that are sweet, pieces that aren't. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's very important that you mix. And just taking a fork, and then we're just gonna add the ingredient of two cups of milk. I start off slowly, maybe half. Mix it, and that's all we're doing. Slowly, so it doesn't roll over the bowl. Make sure you have a large mixing bowl. 
yeah. It's really, really important. Flour mess all over. <laughs> yeah. Frankie, I'm going to need a bit of um, flour sure. to uh, roll out the dough. So if you can. Maybe put a, a bowl. Okay. See how it's coming together? I still need to add more milk. You want a very sticky dough. So if the two cups are not enough, then you add a little bit. So see how it's sticky? That's how it should look. And I don't have that much milk left, but I still have a lot of dry. So I may have to add a little bit more milk. Let's just keep going and we'll see what happens here. Okay, just just keep going around and around and around. And it'll come together. And I'm going to add a little bit more because I can still, like the cornbread, you still see a little bit of dry. Just get a little bit of uh, milk. And this is where you learn to finesse because on some days it'll be dry some days it'll be really wet and it just depends on the temperature and the atmosphere so you have to learn how to eyeball things and it's all come together and it's pretty sticky so you want it together and sticky yeah those two things that's yeah. what you're looking very for. very important it okay holds itself. Yeah. yeah so now let me just wash my hands so I'm going to take about a third. First of all, whatever surface you're working on, you need to flour. Okay? And the simple reason is you don't want it sticking to anything. So I'm going to take about a third of the dough. And you're just going to knead it into the already floured board. I don't need these anymore. <laughs> okay, and I, you can already see it's already not as sticky, right? Mm -hmm. And that's all it is. So now, I don't know what types of rolling pins you have, but I always like using a wooden rolling pin. Yeah, I'm partial to it too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you always flour, put a little bit in your hand and roll around because you don't want the dough sticking to your rolling pin either. And you're just going to roll it out lightly. Don't press. It's just a light push and pull of the dough so that it moves. Okay, so I'm going to get ready to flip, flour, turn. So how often do you make um, fry bread, Trudy? Not very often, but when I do, like I made uh, fry bread and corn soup on Friday, my recipe yielded 18 doughs. I figured I'd have enough for supper on Friday and have lunch Saturday. Well, guess what? All my fry bread were gone. <laughs> <laughs> I guess all your kids so came over. All your family. I had my over. kids, my grandkids, and they're like, "Ooh, fry bread!" I'm like, mm, "Guess I'm not gonna have any." So, in terms of the measurement, you wanted about a three um, inch diameter. I just took a glass that I had in the cupboard. You can get a cookie cutter or anything that you have at home and just start. Making your, little making your little dough breads. So this is probably the part that the kids would have fun with too. Right. right? Sure. But the only you said cookie cutter. But the only thing is that they're going to waste a lot of dough. <laughs> Cuz they're going to be all can over, you right? work it back in? Yes, you can. Yeah. 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 So you can recuperate it. Yep. So I'm going to try and get as so many as the I can. So that you had when you made uh, made it with your soup tray? Yep. Yeah. Oh, wow. okay. You can make it any size you want, but this is a nice size because it's going to expand, right, yeah. in the in the oil. So, alrighty. So, Trudy, can you bake this yeah. instead of fry it? <laughs> the magic Chantal. <laughs> it's called fry bread I for see, a reason. <laughs> well, we were questioning this, yeah. right? Yes. As yeah. well as maybe using it in an air fryer or putting it in the oven. Yeah. Someone so, had tried, and mm, it no, it does not work out. It didn't work. So it so, would be a different recipe if you wanted to bake it. it if you noticed, it. there were a piece that were apart. All I took was a little bit of milk, put it on, put the other piece together, patted it. So now I have a nice surface to make another round. Okay. All right. So let's get ready to go to the stove. 
So just a reminder, and we're, we're sure you're already aware of this, but we do want to say that working with hot oil is very dangerous and For it's sure. extremely hot. Yeah. So just to be careful, especially at the beginning, not to have the kids around too close because it will it may uh, splatter. splatter and uh, we just want to make sure you guys are being safe. Again, just like when we did with the cornbreads, you're going to place it, not throw it or drop it. Place it. That? Place it. So what I mean by Carefully. placing it is putting it actually into the oil as far as you can and then just letting your fingers go, okay? So like that into the oil and let it go. Otherwise, you don't want to. All right, so here we go. It's like perfect. Yeah. But it truly just makes everything look super easy. Yeah. <laughs> Which is good because that will encourage people to try this. Hey, 42 years in the kitchen. <laughs> if you haven't figured it out by then, I don't know. There's something wrong. And wow, we can already see that they're starting to... Uh, yeah, because your oil was so hot, I don't even have to wait so two minutes. I'm going to start flipping. Wow. Okay, so here we go. We're going to flip. When you see the golden edges, that's when it's time to flip. So you can see this, it's a little bit dark, okay? And that's because the oil was so hot. You want it to be a golden, golden brown. So when your breads are in the frying pan, do not walk away from the frying pan. This is a fast process. So, stay close. Okay, I think these are ready to come out. So you have a plate lined with paper towels. Yeah, and that's to yeah. drain off the excess oil. Yeah. If you have a little um, uh, baking rack, you can put them on the baking rack and have the uh, paper towels underneath. You place it on the baking rack and the oh, oil will drip. all drip down. So, um, I'm gonna turn this oil down for just a bit because we're going to continue gonna making finish, uh, the breads. Okay. Yep. But Chantelle has her process that we're going to continue with. Oh, we're showing what to do with the fried yeah. bread, right? Yeah. So yeah. maybe I'll turn off the oil. Sure. To, yeah, because so we're going to we continue worry, this later. We don't worry about this. I have showed you the process. How long did it take? <laughs> Not long at all. Not long at all. So yeah. it's just it's just a matter of bringing your okay. ingredients so together, we'll mixing it properly. Them, yeah, we'll, we'll can just put, put that all it all aside. aside. I got my stuff here. Okay, so Trudy, normally when you make fry bread, what do you have it with? Okay, for me, I just like making fry bread with corn, corn soup. Okay. So we have that as our side for our soup. Mm -hmm. I, I put butter on it and I love it. But you can mm -hmm. also um, make it a dessert fry bread. Okay. You can put Nutella and uh, sliced bananas. You can put <laughs> beautiful strawberries on there. Uh, any type of fruit you like you can make it into a dessert mm -hmm. rather than a meal. And mm -hmm. you're going to show us how to make it into a meal. You could make it into a meal. The way I know fry bread is uh, Indian tacos. Right. And so usually that's chili and some toppings. So we'll, we're going to make one just to, uh, to show. And we had made the chili ahead of time and it, it was in the freezer. So that's something very easy to do. Whenever you make a big pot of chili, you freeze some. Mm. Same for the corn soup. We made that last week and we froze some, so we have it right. for today. And just uh, yeah. to let everybody know, uh, speaking of chili, we did in the past actually have a what's for lunch chili contest. So you can look back in future, uh, in, future in past uh, episodes. episodes that we've done and you can find it on the Facebook page or we're hoping that it's going to be shared in the link maybe under the feed of this, uh, this uh, episode where you'll be able to see just a little uh, short video of Chantal demonstrating a quick uh, chili recipe for those who are interested in following that as well. And that's actually the chili that she's going to be using today. And it looks yeah. beautiful. Yeah, very colorful. <laughs> so here's the chili. We have the video, right, that yes, we're posting? We do. Yeah. Okay. So really, it's whatever you want to make of it, right? So we're going to put, um, I guess I'll put two because they're little, little ones. Like I said, if you're making it for uh, a taco, you would make the bread a little bit bigger. Bigger, yeah. Okay. So and what would you use to cut it? If it was like, <sighs> let's say if it was this big. Well, if you rolled it out and just cut it with a knife and just let it, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Sort it, of a, a loose round shape. Right. Yeah. But this is kind of cute That's too. Cute. Like I, little, I like it. Yeah. yeah little, and some uh, people will um, slice it open and make like an open-faced bread mm -hmm. and put the chili and the toppings on top of it. Do you want to do that? 
Sure. I, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm so tempted to go grab the butter and just. <laughs> you just want to taste it. That that's Frankie. That's she's she's with hot. the butter. Yeah. I guess it cooled so, down fast, eh? Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? It's beautiful inside, yeah. Oh, wow, well, lovely. Whoops. And there's a little steam coming out of there. Yep. Yeah, butter would be great. <laughs> so there you go. Alrighty, so I'll just top it with some chili. You don't have to slice it, but some people do. I'm just it giving her more it, surface. It makes it look like more, you know, yeah, when you giving her more that. surface to work with. Yeah. And then what I like about the small uh, br uh, breads, Trudy, is that you can choose to have a little bit or a lot. And mm -hmm. it's not, not everyone, I'll speak for myself, I can't eat a big Indian taco. Oh, neither can I. Because then too I, much. Will, I won't be able to walk. Mm -hmm. for, for, it'll kill me. So it's nice to taste sometimes, just have like a small portion, you know. So here's your example topping. So you could do whatever you like, but this is just a, an example. Some lettuce, some tomatoes. So if you just look at this, you can see all the grease that came off the bread. And that's what you want to get rid of because you don't want to taste the grease you in your- You don't want it greasy. No, greasy. no, so. A bit of cheese. So, you know, seeing that a batch of this recipe makes yeah, quite me. a bit, um, what about freezing? Would you, could you recommend The bread can be frozen. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because I think it's, a, you know, it's not that it's a lot of work, but if you're going to be in it, might as well make more and have it and you can freeze it. Honestly, Frankie, it doesn't last in my house. It no. never makes it to the freezer. It goes in everybody's belly. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it can be frozen. It has been done. Before frying it? No, 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 no. Well, yeah, you no, I, I wouldn't freeze the dough before, but after it's all done, you can throw it in the freezer and then just once uh, it's already fried. Yep. And then you could reheat it in the oven, I yes, guess. Yes. Yes. Look how pretty that I is. Know, I was gonna say Chantal's really good at making pretty, pretty. The color. The I colors love are the, gorgeous. It's so colorful. Yeah. Yeah. Very so lovely. there you have it, and then we could we could also show the corn soup. Our beautiful corn soup that we reheated from last so week. So this corn soup recipe also is uh, actually from last week's recipe, mm -hmm. where Trudy demonstrated how to make a corn soup. And when we knew we were making fried bread, she mentioned and she did say it before that often it's it's. Uh, I serve it together. I, I like cornbread with uh, uh, not cornbread fry bread with um, corn soup. To me, they go together. I can't have corn soup without bread. That's nice. just, yeah, that's just yeah. the way it is in my house. <laughs> so isn't this gorgeous? Thank you so much, Trudy. I think it it's beautiful. Delicious. Yeah. We have the pot of chili and then and our, bon appetit. Our bowl of soup. So a uh, reminder for anybody interested or wants more information on our program, you can reach out to me, Frankie M at kscsganawage.ca. And I noticed, and it's only when I'm looking back at the videos, because we've had uh, communication be wonderful at preparing these videos. So big shout out to you guys. And it's our hashtag. I cannot believe in prior videos I have been not made, uh, bringing this up, but really important if you are out there and you're not part of the program, but you do love this show and you do follow along with us and you are making these recipes with your loved ones at home, you can always share your pictures using the hashtag FWC Let's Get Cooking and uh, that gives us access to be able to see who's out there, who's making what, and we get to see the little ones helping out in the kitchen. And it's so cute. Oh yeah. <laughs> And I want to give a huge, huge shout out also to all the families who are sending me pictures because the feedback is important and the pictures really, really give us a glimpse of what's going on in your kitchens and it's lovely to see. So we do. We have grandmas that are cooking with their grandkids. We have parents that are cooking. We have dads that are cooking with their kids. So it's fun to see. Amazing. And uh, just a reminder as well that next week is going to be our last week. Imagine, wow, already four weeks. It went really fast. But... Uh, you want to tune in because we have a great recipe in mind uh, that Chantal's going to be demonstrating this time. But we're hoping Trudy will be with us and next week. Thank and you so much, Trudy, for, you're welcome. for sharing all your experience <laughs> with us and it was a lot of fun. Beautiful I, uh, recipe. I enjoyed yeah. it and and sharing awesome. these recipes. Um, passing on that knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, not everybody has passed down these recipes. Mm -hmm. And the recipe for this fry bread came from a very good friend of mine. 
and she was really reticent about giving it to me because she hasn't even shared this with her own family. Oh my wow. goodness. <laughs> Can you imagine? This is how secret her recipe was. But she finally let it out. <laughs> yeah, but she said, you know what? She says, it's about the future generations exactly. learning what we have Share been cooking the with and sharing <laughs> yeah. that with others. So she says, here you go. Good luck. Have fun. Thank you, Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so no. tune in next week when we'll be back here in the kitchen and uh, you know just this is why we had Trudy join us was to let you guys know that even if you've never tried this just small steps to start mm -hmm. so yeah. hopefully you're out there and you're doing this and we'll see you soon Hona. Hona.